Hi, Hernandez. It's Mrs. H, and we are here for this week's IB Advisory. Um, we are going to be talking about the importance of service learning, um, our partnership with the Miracle Foundation, a little bit more about them and their work and what they do. And we're going to talk about um, slides one through seven. And I wanted to start off with a quote from one of my favorite authors, Dr. Seuss. Unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing's going to get better. It's not. Okay, and we're talking about what it takes to change the world. Um, and let's see what Kid President has to say about it. There are lots of ideas how you can change the world. Some people think you should just complain about it. That won't change the world, they'll just make it bad. Some people think you have to have lots of money money. Make it rain everywhere you go. Holla <laughs> for a dollar. Some people think you have to be really loud and yell a lot. It's like with a bullhorn shouting. Hey you, yeah you, get my way right now. <laughs> Other people choose to just make fun of everything. That's dumb, that's dumb, everyone's dumb. It's easier to make fun of stuff, but it's cooler to make stuff. Some people think changing the world can only be done by the smartest person in the world. Just put them in a room, let them figure it out. The solution of world hunger? Food. Wow, that was like so amazing. Some people see the bad in the world and they just decide to ignore it. But that won't help anything. Some people think you have to be really famous and super cool. In fact, lots of people think you have to be powerful to make a difference. Like being mayor, or senator, or president. But the truth is, a title doesn't make you more important. The world is changed by you. It's one person filled with love. And they just have to live it out, so they do something awesome. Then that person is still in love, and they do something awesome. And this goes on and on and on and on. And the next thing you know, everything's awesome. Some people think it's impossible to change the world. It's impossible to change the world. Well, you can see why they could think that. Living in the world with kids who are hungry, people who are homeless, families who aren't happy. I'm just trying to figure it out like everybody else, man. I do know this, though. Next time you feel overwhelmed or totally alone, remember this. Things don't have to be the way they are. The world is changed by ordinary people. Little people living out big love. And that's what gives the world a reason to dance. <laughs> All right, so Kid President has some pretty cool ways to help change the world, but one of the points that he made, um, I wanted to make sure that we looked at um, a little bit more, and that's that the world is changed not by those who are rich and famous, not by those who are in high places. It may seem like that it might be easier for them, but the world is changed by ordinary people like you and me and those that don't give up on trying to make the world a better place. Um, and here's a quote that I like from our former president, Barack Obama. Um, Change will not come if we wait for some other person or if we wait for some other time. We are the ones we've been waiting for. We are the change that we seek. Okay, so it's your turn now. Um, this year, we're going to be talking about many ways for us to participate in service learning. Obviously, the fact that we're virtual means that um, we'll be talking about ways to do that virtually rather than in person. Um, how many times have you seen something and thought someone should do something about that? How many situations have caused you to say, I wish someone would change that? What we should sh say is we should change that. 
Okay, so we're going to talk about three different people, three different young people, and what they did to change the world um, in their sphere. So the first one is Craig Kilberger. Um, one morning over breakfast, 12-year-old Craig Kilberger was flipping through a newspaper looking for the comics when he was stopped short by a story. Um, Iqbal Masai, and I'm not sure how to say that, a 12-year-old former child slave in Pakistan had been murdered because he spoke up for human rights. Iqbal had been sold into slavery at age of four and spent six years changed to a carpet loom before he escaped. Craig had never heard of child labor, so he did some research and learned that over 250 million children around the world were working, many in slave-like conditions. None of us had much experience with social justice work just a desire to take action. And so this is a little bit more about him. Okay, and so that one, um, it, the importance of it is it started with one boy. One boy who read an article and said, you know what, that's not okay. Let's see what we can do about it. And as you can see, others got on board and look at the good that can start just with one person that has the idea. All right, the second one story that we're going to look at is um, Richard's Rwanda. 
Um, and this is Jessica, Jessica Markowitz. Um, she was just 11 years old when she met Richard Kanaga, a human rights activist from Rwanda. She learned from him about the war in his native country and how it left many children orphaned and alone. She did research and made a slideshow to share with her sixth grade class. When girls in her class learned about how Rwandan girls were often prevented from going to school, they formed a group called Richard's Rwanda to help out girls in a village called Nyamata. The organization now has over 100 volunteers and has raised over $130,000. And so this is um, an organization that helped um, sending girls to school on outreach and helped with gender equality. So let's look at this. I really think compassion is giving and it really means hope and togetherness and forgetting all the things that come before that. My family hosted a man named Richard and he was from Rwanda and he was telling me stories about how he really felt that his country needed help and especially those kids that were there without education. Jessica, she asked me, what, what, what do you think I can do uh, to help some of the girls of my age in Rwanda? Most of them are coming from the ma their mothers are uh, like widows and they don't have money for materials like books, uh, you know, uniforms. It's not easy. I decided I wanted to help the girls in Rwanda by supporting them to go to school. And I wanted the girls in Rwanda to be able to learn and be hopeful with their dreams and have their dreams come true. <laughs> With the small contribution they have got, it means a lot. It encourages them to continue studying, which is their vision anyway. It's been a lot of work being the president of this group, but I know that all the work is going to something good, and I know that if I was there, they would help me. All right, so yet another example of a um, young girl who decided that she could help in a small way um, people who she'd never met in a country that she had never been to. Okay, and then the last profile that we're gonna look at today um, is Austin Gutwein. Um, and it started when he was nine. He watched a video that showed children who had lost their parents to AIDS. And realizing he could make a difference, he decided to shoot basketball free throws on World AIDS Day in 2004, so a little bit ago, to raise awareness. His goal was to shoot 2,057 free throws, one for each child that would be orphaned that day while he was in school. Um, with the help of friends and family, he collected almost $3,000 to provide food, clothing and shelter to eight orphan children. Um, Hoops of Hope is now the biggest basketball shoot-a-thon in the world, and Austin has managed to raise over $3 million for children left behind by AIDS. So let's see a little bit about his story. And we close tonight with the story of a teenager first profiled by CBS Sports, someone who's made plenty of money thanks to basketball. Not for himself, though. As Kelly Wallace reports, he's got a more important hoop dream. People think that kids can't really make a difference and that they should wait until they're older, but that's totally wrong. You can do something as a kid. Austin Gutwein of Phoenix sounds a lot wiser than his 13 years. After an African pen pal encouraged him to find out about the continent, he learned 12 million African children have been orphaned by the HIV AIDS epidemic. I just kept thinking about what it would be like if I lost my parents. And I just decided, you know what, I just got to go out and do something. 
So Austin created Hoops of Hope, a charity for African orphans that in just four years has raised $350,000, one foul shot at a time. There wasn't a high school within 60 miles. Twachianda, Zambia is a world away from Phoenix. Here, 20% of the children have been orphaned by HIV AIDS. Last fall, Austin and this community became forever linked. When I heard about how far you guys had to walk to go to school, I decided to do something about it. Hoops of Hope paid for a brand new high school. The first lesson? I teach you how to shoot, all right? No surprise. I've uh, never met a young person at that age who could be involved in raising funds for our children here, all the way from America. Austin's next project? Paying for a new medical center in Twachianda. It was amazing just to finally see what we've done and what we're yet to do. Kelly Wallace, CBS News, New York. Okay, yeah, another um, young person that at the age of 14 decided, um, well, nine when this started, but he continued it going. Um, and so he was very, very influential in helping others across the world. All right, so this is it for today. Um, I want you to think about what you can do in your sphere of influence. Maybe you um, won't be able to help people directly halfway across the world, but what do you see around you that's going on that maybe um, you might be able to affect? And we'll talk more on Thursday. Bye, guys.